And now when I get to look back at it as a fan, just almost like I'm not involved where we're doing this podcast and I watch the episodes, I think everybody was so good, but the same thing I say from minute one, that scene in Koi, and, and yes, you say over the top, I don't look at you as over the top at all. And I used to talk to Connolly about your acting a lot because Connolly, and I do, I think you'll agree with me, Connolly's one of the funniest people alive. Like, and I would say to him, you got to react because comedy is reacting. And I just, I'm not insulting you. I want you to just look at what Jeremy does in a scene where he's not talking. And Connolly really started getting incredibly good with reactions. And that's, you know, what I grew up on watching Alan Arkin and Woody Allen and, and some of the great guys. That's what you would do in a scene where you're not even talking. I mean, I remember these scenes with Will Sasso and, and Rex, you know, at... Um, Oh, fuck, I forgot the name of the restaurant. Jesus. Um, in Beverly Hills. But 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 yeah. that's an that's an interesting example where Will Sasso, we, we were so lucky. Every every cameo, these people overachieved. And Will Sasso is one of the talk about funniest people on the planet. Yeah. And my only job in that scene, to be honest with you, was to not ruin the scene. Right. Because and I was literally just clenching every orifice in my body just to, because this motherfucker was going in on Rex and trying to his character's trying to fuck him and force feed him pounds of lobster. Yeah. And he just kept coming at Same Rex. Dibs. I mean, it was just it was just the funniest, craziest thing. So I was just trying to hold on for dear life. We were doing a scene with the great Gary Cole, you know, who it was such a brilliant character, you know, and he's a, a tragically flawed agent that's screwing it up. And um, I was so excited about the episode. And I said to you, how's the episode looking? And yeah, you were miserable. <laughs> and and I don't know. I think you're very comfortable in your in your misery. I'm not I, honestly because you're miserable a lot. I mean, to be honest with you, I am. I'm. When I'm making something, it's not a fun process for me. And Entourage, which should have been, you know, like a joy for eight years, it's just I want it to be perfect, whatever that means. And people right. can hate it and people can love it, whatever it is. I tried yeah. my best and I yeah. was so obsessive with that. And that's why I wasn't, you know, I wasn't excited to go run another show after this because I was like, I think I will die if I do it again. And I really didn't think about that with you. I just thought... I can Jeremy can just show up and waltz in here, memorize some shit, and he's got this character down to a science. But 